The second finger. Anyone who knows me knows I am uh, constantly harping on the second finger. It was a few years ago that I started to notice in my own playing, as well as when I would hear other people, that I couldn't hear the second finger. And I started to also realize that this finger was the most important finger in the hand. The thumb is the brains of the hand. What the thumb does, so the rest of the hand will do. But the second finger is the anchor. And what the problem is, is that there's a lot of emphasis because we oftentimes the melody is in the thumb. So we give a lot of emphasis to the thumb, a lot of emphasis and skip right over the second finger. And uh, we're always in a hurry to get to the bottom or a hurry to get to the top. But when you stop and slow down a little bit and you really listen for that second finger, it is amazing how much more clarity there is to your playing. And earlier in another segment, I talked about chords and playing any chord at all where just a, major, a simple C major chord or even a wire C major chord where again, if I just go, that's fine, but if I go to the second finger, fingers are squeaking. It allows that space, allows everything to be heard and it gives a ringing to the thumb. There's a ring, gives me that control, phrasing, setting, whatever it is. And the second finger is, I mean, there's just so many uh, reasons for it. It aligns the rest of the hand. If that second finger is out of alignment in Mozart Flute and Harp Concerto or anything with scales, um, it's going to make it very hard to be able to be successfully played. Uh, I, I, um, my feeling overall is it, to sum it up, is that it opens up a world of clarity to uh, think about the second finger. When you're going up a scale, think about go to the second finger. The thumb will always be heard. The fourth will usually be heard. And this is why in a chord, when people put the emphasis on the bottom, if they're going to play the first note, is going to be a bottom the fourth finger, that's where the emphasis, instead of going to the top and allowing going to that second finger and separating between two and one and letting the sound ring. Uh, one more thing on this note, it is not the second finger per se, but one of the things I've noticed is when people are learning a piece of music and they see a chord in front of them and they're looking at the notes and if they start with the fourth finger first and they're like this trying to figure out what the notes are and then they get it, they, they'll get the chord. But if they think about the thumb, placing always the thumb first, the other fingers will automatically go on the string. It's almost like magic. They automatically just go on the string. This way it's like this, this way it's just automatically on the string. I don't know why, but it seems to really work and that's why I call the thumb the brains of the hand. Um, the last comment about the second finger. This is connected with um, something which I was told uh, they used a funny term for us for this when I was young called dead chicken. And it refers to when you have a single note to use the whole hand instead of this, I call this the headless horseman, uh, where the thumb is down and I'm not using the thumb, I'm just picking at the note. Instead of every note I play, if it's a single note, sometimes I start my students out just on a single note, that feeling of finding the spot using the whole hand even though I'm only playing one finger. This is where the control is. This is where the control is. And the beauty of this, whenever you do this articulation, you are far more relaxed when you play, when you're playing this way, than if you're playing on the tips of your fingers.